Hello everyone and welcome to a new tutorial. Today we will be recreating the Ice Blast ability used by Ancient Apparition in the game Dota 2. What this ability does, it shoots a projectile that does nothing but tracks its position, then if you press the release key or if it reaches the maximum distance, another projectile is shot at the previous projectile and it explodes. The cool thing about this is that the longer it travels, the bigger the AoE. So without any further ado, let's get started. Here we are in a brand new project and I have already set up my scene with a plane and a first person controller. Let's hit play so you can see that this is quite empty project. All you can do is just look around and jump. Alright. Create a new empty game object and call it Ice Blast, then create a new particle system called Flying Effects. Make the Flying Effects a child of the Ice Blast, then set their position and rotations to zero. Cool. Before we work on the particle system, we need to add a sphere collider to the Ice Blast game object and make it a trigger by checking this box. Now for the flying effects, I'm not going to spend much time in it. My tutorials usually focus on functionality rather than visuals. Now that I have these particles showing the size of our ice blast, we need to be able to scale it up. However, if you try scaling it, you may notice that the particles does not scale with its parent, the ice blast game object. For them to be able to scale together inside your particle system, change the scaling mode to hierarchy. I want to make it just slightly better looking by adding a huge ball on the center of it. Just like the Ice Blast in Dota, right? Duplicate the Flying Effects game object and rename it to Impact Effects. Now as the name suggests, this will be the Impact Explosion, so do whatever you wish here. I'm just doing something similar to the Flying Effects particle system with moving and fading particles. Good enough. Disable the impact effects and drag the Ice Blast game object into your project folder to create a prefab, then create a new C-sharp script called Ice Blast script and add it to our prefab, then open it to begin coding our ability. Okay, so as always, we will begin by setting up our variables. A boolean to control if you want the scaling to be visible as it is flying or not. This is optional because the ability itself does not scale up as it flies, but rather it gets scaled after the impact. Now we will need a bunch of different floats. They are all pretty self-explanatory, but you will see what they do as we use them. We will need a key code. This is the key we will press to release the Ice Blast. We'll need a string to check for the enemy tag as well as a public transform named Caster. Hide this in the inspector since we don't want to change it there, we will change it through code. It is public because we will use a different script to assign this. I will show you in a second. We will also need three game objects for all the particles. A float to control our timers, a boolean to check if we have lasted and run the right loop, and last but not least, three vector trees. Two are going to be positions and the last one will be the scale size. Inside start, we need to assign our two game objects we just created. These names must match. Next, we need to make sure this Ice Blast is set to the starting scale, or the min scale rather. Assign the end scale to be the current scale which we have just set above, and we also assign the start position to be this transform's position. Inside update, we check if we have pressed the release key, then create a new function called create blast and add it in here. Also, add a check to see if we have not blasted. Cool. Now, if we have blasted, we need to move our ice blast. To be able to move the ice blast from one point to the next one in a certain amount of time, we do this very simple calculation and then move the transform using vector3.lerp. Now we check if we have assigned the flying effects game object and if we have, then we rotate it using the weighting rotate speed and lastly here we scale it up to the end scale using the FX scale speed to get it looking just like the ice blast. Out here we need to check if the ice blast has reached the end position and if we have, we create a new function called impact and add it in here. Great. So if we have not blasted, we have to rotate it, the ice blast as well as move it forward in time. 
we also need to assign the end scale variable so we learn the end scale value to be the max scale over time using the scaling speed variable. Now if we have enabled scale up, we scale up our ice blast as it is flying rather than when it impacts like the ice blast does. This is optional and you can enable and disable it whenever you want. Lastly, we copy this and then change these values so that we can get the distance traveled and if it is bigger than the max distance, then we have to create the blast to avoid having it fly forever and ever and ever. Now we do an on-trigger enter to give the units that the ice blast connects with a frostbite effect. Of course, I cannot really tell you how to do this part since every game is different but here you will add a status like, for example in Dota, you cannot heal when this status is applied to you. So work your magic and do whatever works best for your game here. Inside the create blast function, the first thing we do is set the boolean to be true so that our update loops are correct and then unparent the flying game object as well as destroy it using the time to reach variable. Now we have to create the blast effects. This will be a copy of the flying effects game object and we will set the blast effects parent to be the ice blast and set its scale to be the min scale just like how we do in start. Down here we set the start position to be the caster's position and the end position to be the blast effects transforms position we just created. Set the ice blast position to be the start position which we have assigned up here and then reset the ice blast scale. Awesome, all done with that function. On to impact. In here we unparent the impact game object and set its scale to be the end scale as well as enable it because if you remember we disable it in the hierarchy. Okay, now we have to damage our enemies. This part is pretty simple and if you ever done an AoE damaging ability then this will be quite easy for you. We basically grab all the colliders inside a sphere in this case, for its radius, we will use the end scale X, Y, or Z, any of them work. Then we run a for each loop to check if the collider has the enemy tag, then here you will damage your enemies. I do not know how to show you this since every single project is different, but it will be something like this, I think. Lastly, we destroy the impact effects using the impact destroy delay as well as the ice blast itself. Alright, 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 we are done with this script now. Onto your character controller. You need to have a public game object that will be the Ice Blast prefab. Then down here under update, you simply create the Ice Blast in front of the camera using the camera's rotation, just like how you would with like bullets and stuff like that for first person games, right? The important part is down here. You need to access the Ice Blast script and assign the caster to be this character controller's transform. Okay, we are done coding. Now let's hop back into the editor. I have a picture of the perfect values in my own opinion, of course. The way that it looks is the most similar to the Ice Blast, so I will set them here. Also, do not forget to assign the Ice Blast prefab to your character controller script. Hit play and let's test it out. Okay, you cannot really see it well because of the colors, so I'm just going to change the ball color to blue and give it a bunch of more particles. Okay, now you can see it flying towards it real fast. It's hard to tell the distance traveled because we have enabled scale up in the inspector so let me just move the scene view to the side here so we can see it scaling up. Pretty cool eh? Disable scale up and yep. Now it does look like the Ice Blast, right? I just added this option so that you could see how big it gets as it travels. Of course, you can choose whatever you want for your game. And that is it for this tutorial. Go customize its visuals to better fit your game.
All files are available for you to download in my Patreon as well as many other abilities we have recreated here in the channel. Like and subscribe, you know how it goes. I hope this was useful for you, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.